Welcome to 15 Minutes of Faith, the place where we dive into God's Word to be inspired, encouraged, and equipped with practical application for today's challenges. I'm Pastor Jeremy Byler, and I'll be guiding you through your journey of faith one step at a time. Whether you're facing the storms of life, basking in the blessings of God, or just have questions about the Bible, 15 Minutes of Faith is your companion on the journey of spiritual growth. So, grab your Bible and let's get growing. This is 15 Minutes of Faith. Welcome back to 15 Minutes of Faith. I'm your host, Pastor Jeremy Byler of Harvest Baptist Church in Bay City, Michigan. And I'm glad we can be together again today as we continue our series, Foundations of Faith, Growing Deeper in Your Walk with God. In this series, we're building a strong foundation for your faith one step at a time. And in the last episode, we talked about overcoming doubt and how doubt, when handled properly, can lead to an even stronger relationship with God. I'd encourage you, if you haven't listened to it yet, go ahead and listen to that episode and then jump into the one we're going to talk about today. Because last week, in the last episode we had, uh, I gave you a challenge. And there's going to be a challenge with each, with each and every one of these episodes, so I hope you accept them. It's nothing too excruciating for that matter, but again, it's it's the application. And that's what we have. It's it's the practical application of God's timeless truth for today. So again, I can I can give you information. I can give you facts and figures. I can give you you know narrative accounts of the Word of God, which are actual things that actually happen to real people. But it really doesn't become real to you. You don't really deepen your faith until there's that application. So please, by all means, I I encourage you to take these challenges that you're going to have with each one of these episodes and Foundations of Faith, because again, it's going to help you grow deeper in your walk with God. You see, last week we had the challenge of this. It was to read a chapter of the Gospel of John each day. John is the greatest gospel to introduce you to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you accepted that challenge, I trust God spoke to you through his word and strengthened your faith. But if you haven't started yet, it's never too late. God's word is always available to you. And today we're shifting from dealing with doubt. We're going to get into another crucial topic, restoring joy in your walk with God. It's very difficult to find your joy if you're struggling with doubt. That's why it's important you listen to the previous episode first. It's once you deal with that doubt and you start working through that, and you have that foundation and that basis, now you can begin the building blocks of restoring your joy in your walk with God. You know, it's easy to lose joy in your Christian walk. Maybe a relationship with God has started to feel more like a routine than a relationship. That can happen a lot. We have a lot of routines, and we're creatures of comfort, and we love to get into our habits. We love to get into our routines. We love our schedules. We we don't necessarily want to live just haphazardly. But what happens when we do that, though those are good for us in our structure, but sometimes when we get into that routine, we are just kind of finding ourselves going through the motions. It's just another activity to check off. It's another activity to do. And once it's done, it's over. There's really nothing coming from that. And when it comes to restoring your joy and your walk with God, now, now mind you, this isn't a basis in feeling or emotion. Joy is is deeper than that. Happiness is good. I enjoy being happy, but happiness is not the same as joy. And joy you will do even in the midst of particular circumstances. A lot of times I'll hear people say, you know, I really want to get after it and get on fire for God, but I'm just not feeling it. And you can't do that. Uh, your, Your flesh struggles against the spirit and your flesh wants to dominate over that. And if you are just driven by feeling, you are living a very dangerous Christian life. I know many that have been fueled by that emotion. Uh, I've been fueled by, well, let's just call it what it is, by the flesh. And not many of them stick in the faith all too long because the flesh is contrary to the spirit. And it would, the flesh will have you doing things that the spirit would not. And when you surrender to the flesh... Uh, the spirit just steps back and lets you do that. So what I'm talking about it in regards to joy is just that deep-seated sense of joy, that spirit-filled joy that only the fruit of the spirit can offer in regards to that. 
And again, maybe you've been filing, finding yourself in a routine. Maybe you find yourself a little bit stagnant. And maybe you've gone through uh, some trials. Maybe you've gone through some heartache. Maybe you've gone through some tragedy that, you know, has just really hit close to home. Uh, just a gut punch in your in your life, and you're just having a hard time dealing with it. And I know the Bible talks about count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. And we've got a series of messages on First Peter uh, here at Harvest Baptist Church. You can go to YouTube or Facebook, Harvest Baptist Bay City, to help you navigate through those trials. And I make the point there that when you find yourself in a trial, you can still have that joy. It doesn't mean you know, as you're driving on your way to work and you get a flat tire, you're clicking your heels because you're like, yippee, a trial. I'm so glad to have this. No, you can have that joy that says, even though this is something I didn't expect, even though this is something that causes me grief or pain, I know that I still have the joy of the Lord. But sometimes those trials can just steal everything from you. They can just suck the life right from your body. And it's not uncommon for Christians to find their spiritual life falling into routine or spiraling out of control. Maybe your prayers feel like they've been bouncing off the ceiling, not going any higher, not even getting through the very room that you're praying in, or your Bible reading has been just another item on your to-do list. You kind of walk away from it. You close the book and you think, well, that's over with. And sometimes you, you find yourself going through the day, you can't even remember what you read, You know, especially if you're not necessarily following a Bible reading plan, which is you know, one way or another. It's not necessarily the plan. The plan just keeps you in the habit of, of going to the Word of God. But maybe you walk away and you just think, you know what, I don't even remember what I read this morning. And you can find yourself feeling that way. But whatever the case, when our walk with God loses its joy, everything on our spiritual life feels heavier and it feels harder. Talking about you might feel just worn out, exhausted, like there's nothing left. You just don't know what to do. As a matter of fact, sometimes when you're in that position, you might find yourself looking at the Bible and just thinking, I just don't want to look at that thing right now. I just don't have it in me to to read that right now. And I'll tell you, I've been there. I've been there. You, you look at the Bible. You know it's the right thing. You know it's God's word. You know it's good for you. And it's just, you know, my brain is just not ready to receive that yet. That's a different topic that we'll talk about probably later on in some other messages in regards to rest and just putting yourself in a good mental space. Uh, but what I'm talking about right now is that, you know, you just find yourself in a routine, a rut, you're stagnant, and you just need to get back on track. Because again, when, when, when our walk with God loses its joy, again, everything feels harder, everything feels more difficult, but the Bible is clear. God wants us to experience joy in our Christian walk. As a matter of fact, in Psalm 51.12, David had a prayer. His prayer was this, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Coming from King David, a man after God's own heart. You've probably heard a number of messages that have to do with being a David. A lot of times that has to do with facing your Goliath, standing up to your giant. And we see David as somewhat a role model, Obviously, he had his faults, just as we all do, but a lot of times we see David as a role model, but Psalm 51 makes it very clear. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Now, this is a prayer that David had after a tremendous sin that he had committed, but yet he is still pursuing after God, which is something we need to continue to do as well. And David was one, a man after God's own heart. He recognized the need to have the joy of salvation restored in his life, and maybe that's where you're at today. Again, just like with doubt... We need to be honest with ourselves and just take it to the Lord. God knows when you're filled with doubt. It's no surprise to him. God knows when you are discouraged and you have lost your joy. So there's no sense of trying to hide it from him or trying to portray ourselves in any particular way. Take it to the Lord, just like David did. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, he says. Lord, I want that joy back. Lord, help me to find that joy. So what can we do to find our joy? Let's take a look at some steps here today that we can do to do exactly that. Number one, the first thing we need to do, we see from King David there, is remember the gift of salvation. Sometimes we lose joy because we forget the incredible gift of salvation. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. When we remember that our salvation is a gift from God, there should be a sense of joy that naturally follows. 
Reflect on the fact that you've been saved, you've been redeemed, you've been forgiven. Not because of anything you've done, but because of what Christ has done for you. You have new life in Christ. Old things are passed away. All, uh, you know, all things have become new. You have the joy of salvation. You are not alone. You have the presence of the Holy Spirit that joins you at that moment of salvation when you surrender yourself over to Christ, not only for the forgiveness of sins, but you make him the Lord of your life and you call upon him for salvation. And with that, when you remember and just meditate on or think about the joy of of salvation, it should compel you to spend time in God's presence. The Bible tells us that joy is found in the presence of the Lord. Psalm 1611 says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. If your joy is faded, spend some more time in his presence, first and foremost through prayer, through worship, just contemplating, meditating, praising him, but also reading his word. Have you noticed that uh, two of the three verses we've we've covered today have come from the Psalms? I'll tell you, that's something that I do in my Christian walk. And if I don't know anywhere else to read or if I'm really struggling, I'll just spend time in the Psalms. It doesn't have to be anything academic. Uh, You know, it doesn't have to be anything too complicated. Just read them. You'll notice that a lot of times in the Psalms, when you're reading them, you'll, you'll see people regardless of who the author is or the composer is of the psalm, they will be in a state of despondency, discouragement. They'll have a lack of joy. But as you read through the psalm, you'll see God do the work in the person composing that divinely inspired psalm. And they'll come out the other side renewed, refreshed, and invigorated. And that's the same thing that's going to happen to you. Just spend some time in the psalms, just reading one after another. And... Just allow God to do his work. Again, it doesn't have to be academic. We don't have to parse these things out, try to determine the intent or the motive or the meaning or the definitions or any of that. Just read them for what they are. That's what they're there for. And as we continue to reflect on the joy of our salvation, as we spend time with God, meditating on him, praying with him, uh, spending time in his word, there's also an obligation or an opportunity for us to serve others. Joy isn't found in receiving from God, but joy is found in giving to others. Acts chapter 20, verse 35 says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When you serve others, you reflect the love of Christ. When you serve others, it brings joy both to you and those you serve. Church family that attends Harvest Baptist Church will know, and I've said this before, one of the greatest things that we have in our church, one of the greatest ministries we have is something Uh, That wouldn't seem extremely extravagant, but it is. It's our encouragement ministry. At the beginning of every service, we have an opportunity to hand out encouragements. Uh, Sometimes it's a card. Most of the time, it's a a card with maybe a kind word written in it. Uh, I've seen sometimes where it's been a gift. As a matter of fact, there's been one time where I've actually seen an actual pie in the pulpits as I'm standing there as an encouragement to somebody. But really what it is, is an act of service, of thinking of someone else praying about someone else, and it's just whether it's a kind word, kind gesture, or a gift, or something, it's an opportunity to give to others. And I'll tell you from my own personal experience, and this is what I'll tell the church family as well, the best thing I can do when I've lost my joy, when I need encouragement, the best thing that I can do is encourage someone else. You'll be surprised. I, I promise you. You start encouraging other people, it's going to bring joy to your life. And it's because you're serving others, you're investing in others. And that's what Christ did. And you're just being the embodiment of Christ when you serve others, when you invest in other people. And then the last one we see here is this, is is rejoice in trials. I talked a little bit about that at the beginning here, but let's talk a little bit more about that. Because this might seem difficult. The Bible commands us to rejoice even in trials. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 says this, My brethren, what does he say? He says, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You see, when you understand that God is using trials to grow you, you can experience joy even in times of difficulty. Again, this does not mean that the situation itself is good. Romans chapter 8 is an off 
quoted verse when it comes to trials. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. And a lot of times we misconstrue that or we mishear that of saying, and we know all things are good. That's not what we say at all. All things work together for good, regardless. God knows we live in a sin-filled, wicked world. And we're not saying that all things are good. You know, you mean I lost my grandfather in a, in a car accident? You're telling me that's good? No, I'm not. But we don't know how God's going to work something out of that for good. I'll tell you, uh, as you listen to me speaking to you today, uh, the cancer that my wife's stepfather ultimately died from played a key p component in my salvation. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, was it good that he had cancer? Was it good that he passed away? No, it was a terrible time, a sad time. Wonderful man. A kindest, most patient, most generous person I've ever known. He's in heaven now in the presence of Jesus. It was a sad day when he died, but that ultimately led to my salvation. He's rejoicing in heaven because of that. And that's what we're talking about here. Again, uh, when it comes to trials, God is doing something in your life. You know, there's trials of maturity, just trying to grow us in our faith. But there's also trials of sowing and reaping. God may be trying to rid you of something in your life that doesn't belong. Regardless, when you understand that God, again, is using these trials and these tribulations to grow you, you can experience joy even in times of difficulty. So if you've lost the joy in your relationship with God, know that he is ready to restore it. Like David, you can pray, restore unto me the, the joy of thy salvation. And God loves to answer that prayer. If you feel like the joy in your faith is dimmed, here's the challenge I have for you. I invite you to come before God with an open heart. Ask him like David did to restore the joy of your salvation. God desires again to fulfill your life with his joy, which is your strength. So here we go. We've got another challenge for this week. And here it is. This week, I challenge you to set aside 15 minutes every day. And before you start shaking your head no and telling me it can't be done, think about how much time you spend on your phone. It's way more than 15 minutes. Put the phone down. Spend 15 minutes each day in God's presence, whether it's reading the Psalms, whether it's just meditating on him, or whether it's just sitting in prayer. Focus on the goodness of God and ask him to restore the joy of your heart. Furthermore, here's the next challenge. I want you to engage in one act of kind service for someone else. It could be as simple as a kind gesture, or it could just be offering your time. But as you do, pay attention to how it impacts your spirit. Thank you for joining me again today for this episode of Foundations of Faith. I hope you're encouraged to seek after the joy that only God can give. Next time, next week, we're going to explore how to build godly habits in a distracted world. Speaking of phones, an essential step to maintaining the joy and health of our spiritual lives. Remember, the Lord is your strength. The Lord is your joy. So please, follow through with those challenges, stick with it, and as always, stay faithful.